Okay, thank you. Good, good afternoon. Thank you for being here in the last talk of the last session. Uh, so, so this presentation is going to be about OGC API standards and is uh, by myself uh, and Athena Trakas, which is in the back of, of the room. So I'll start with a bit talking a little bit about uh, why I think it's important to use standards and how we can use them. So basically, uh, standards are important uh, to share geospatial information in uh, an efficient way. So to make sure that the systems integrate well with each other and that data is reusable, which is ultimately what we want to achieve. We don't want data to remain in silos, but we want it to be uh, reusable. According to these fair data principles, which say that information should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. So this would be like the ideal world. Uh, so we have, uh, I, I want to connect to a server, and it doesn't matter what the software is. It could be PyGeo API, it could be LD proxy, uh, something else. Uh, and then I want to use a client to connect to the server. And the client could also be uh, a Jupyter Notebook or it could be QGIS. So actually, I, as a user, I should not care uh, about these things. I should not be forced to use a specific client or to connect to a specific server because all of them are using a standard. So this is the, the final goal of interoperability. So uh, in the example here, I, the standard that I'm using is OGC API features, which I'll talk uh, in a second. So in terms of um, standards, there are many organizations that uh, deal with standards. We have the the W3C, the web consortium, which deals uh, with standards for, for the web. But uh, in the scope of our domain of geospatial information, uh, OGC is the organization uh, who is uh, actually uh, taking care of these standards. And it's a member organization, so who is developing the standards are actually the members. And they do this through a collaborative process. So we have... Uh, D different members from uh, all uh, corners of life. So there are uh, organizations, like you see, th these are just an example, but there are organizations, there are uh, agencies, governmental agencies, universities, uh, and so on. Large companies, small companies. So what is actually an OGC standard? Uh, it's, actually, it's just a document, uh, but to arrive to this document, there was a long process uh, where the members of the working groups, they collaborate and they engage uh, in, through this process, the RFC process, and they make sure that the final result uh, is um, addressing all the use cases that sh it should address. So it's uh, achieving the optimal interoperability. So what, what's inside the standard? If you look at the document of standard, you see that there are requirement classes. So these are the requirements uh, that, which, which are basically uh, just, um, which are basically just specifications that the standard uh, needs to, to address. And these requirements is very important that they are testable because we need to be able to say this, uh, this particular implementation is conformant to the standard. So, each group of uh, st uh, requirements, are, they are grouped in classes, and then these classes are grouped in conformance classes, which are going to be tested. Th this is uh, an example of how uh, a requirement looks like and how uh, a test looks like. So the, the test should be abstract. It's, it's, it's uh, completely agnostic about the implementation. So, uh, I think many people have heard about uh, OGC standards. Uh, maybe you recognize some of the standards in this slide. Uh, like is the case of WMS or WFS and so on. So they've been around for a, a very long time and they are in, at the core of many spatial data infrastructures. 
but they were designed actually a long time ago, a uh, time that we still had uh, Spice Girls and, and Game Boy. And at that time, the web was also very different from, from what it is today. So uh, there were many, many different changes. Uh, at that time, SOAP, SOAP was a technology that was uh, very ubiquitous, and the uh, encodings with XML were uh, really uh, popular. But things have changed, uh, fortunately, some may, may think. And things have also changed within OGC. So OGC wanted to uh, actually embrace these changes uh, and use all, leverage all the capacities that we see in the modern web. So we're using uh, HTTP status methods, status codes, content negotiation, and, and so on. Uh, also, uh, to improve the discoverability of um, geospatial data. So a lot of people are searching for data in the search engines these days. So it's important to uh, leverage uh, schema.org. And uh, mo moreover, it's uh, an open development. So the development of the standard is made in the public eye uh, in GitHub repositories. And anybody can actually follow and even contribute to it. Uh, there's also the, the adoption of the open API uh, specification, so you can actually, as part of the standard, you have uh, a description of how the standard works in an interactive manner. So if you use the open API or even Swagger, you're familiar with this uh, interactive web interface where you can go and test the requirements and look at the response and understand how, how the standard works in a in an interactive fashion, so without actually having to read all the documentation or all the pages uh, that, uh, um, th that, that compose the standard. So this is what ultimately what uh, OGC wanted to achieve. Uh, it's just like improving the developer experience and making sure that people that are not familiar with OGC standards or even with GIS, so mainstream web, web developers, are able to uh, quickly look at these uh, standards, look at the open API specification, for instance, and, and start uh, studying it and developing something very quickly. So the, the OGC API family uh, includes many different standards. Uh, as it was the case for the OWS services. So depending on the type of data that you want to expose, you could use um, OGC API maps, uh, or you could use uh, OGC API routes, or coverages, or processes. So depending on the type of geospatial data, you would choose a different standard. And they are in uh, different stages of development. So the ones that you can you see in uh, in green, they have at least one part that has been already approved. So this is the key question. Who is using these standards? Because a lot of people are using the OWS services. Is anyone actually using these new OGC APIs? OK, I see someone in the back. A anyone else? All right. <laughs> OK, that's good. So we, we have many people in the room who are, which are using these uh, standards. So um, there, at, at, at this moment, uh, if we look at the OGC API features, which within this family is the, we can say is the most mature one, you will find there are seven server-side implementations of the standard. So maybe, and, and, and eight client sites. So maybe some of the software that you are already using, uh, it's implementing this standard, either the, the client side or, or the, the server side. And this list is growing every day. So just recently, there was um, um, an integration, a component that was added to Apache Camel, uh, which is a, an open source uh, framework from Apache, which allows users to integrate a data source uh, which is published using OGC API features. And it's in pre-release right now, but it will be uh, released soon. So what about OSGU, uh, OGC APIs and OSGU? Uh, there are uh, actually uh, many, 
many OSU pro products that implement uh, OG, OGC standards. Th this is not only for OGC API, this is for all the OGC standards. Uh, but if you look at them, they, they, are, they are compliant, so they are listed. This means that they are listed in the OGC website as compliant because they went through the tests uh, that make sure that the standard is uh, certified. Uh, and all of them are also reference implementations. So reference implementations are extremely important because they are uh, publicly visible and people can inspect these implementations and understand uh, how the standards work. So all these projects are both uh, compliant to the standard and reference implementations. And uh, some of them are even also um, early implementers. So uh, if you were in, my, in, the, in the talk, in the keynote this morning, you see that uh, there is a, no, a new uh, MOU, Memory of Understanding, between OSGO and OGC. And through this o MOU, we hope to see more projects joining this uh, OSGO Hall of Fame. There are also uh, real use cases of deployments of uh, OGC APIs. I just mentioned three here. There are many more. And uh, two of them, uh, WWIS, uh, In a Box, and um, Emotional Cities, were actually um, presentations uh, that were uh, shown here in, in this FOS4G. So the, these are use cases that were presenting here during this conference. And all of them, the three of them, are using uh, at their core uh, PyGeo API, which is a, a Python uh, implementation of a suite of OGC API standards. So Zim is implementing actually several of the standards that I showed in, uh, in the previous slide. So what is the status of all these OGC APIs? Uh, I don't, they are all in development. So this is the thing, they, are, they started around 2017 and they are all in development. But the OGC APIs uh, are developed in uh, parts, so in, in uh, we can say in building blocks. So one part is approved, and then we move to, and then an other part is approved. So you can uh, use already some of these APIs. Uh, I, I mean, you can use actually all of them, but uh, the the ones that are in green are the ones that have been already at already approved. So at, at this moment. Uh, as it stands, you have OGC API EDR, Environment uh, uh, Data Retrieval, OG OGC API Common, which is transversal to, to all the APIs, uh, OGC API Processes, and OGC API Futures. And very soon, uh, OGC API uh, Tiles will also be uh, an approved standard. Uh, so this, this calendar is, is a sort of forecast because we don't know exactly the dates that they will be released. But as it stands, uh, we are going to see in, at the end of this year and, and, and during next year, we're going to see more parts of OGC APIs uh, being approved. So as I said before, the development uh, is taking place mostly, or uh, a great part of the development is take, taking place on the GitHub repositories. This means that anyone can uh, look and, and watch, monitor the status of, of the standards and even contribute. So if it's something that you feel uh, it's not uh, right or is not being completely addressed in the standard, you have the option to file an issue or even, uh, why not, create a pull request if you are, if you are confident this, this could be a, a good change. And the code sprints. The code sprints are also part of the development process of the standards. So basically, uh, around four or five times a year, a group of standards is, is selected and they are put into this code sprint. And this is like putting them uh, in front, so, so we put them in front of the developers and people are uh, implementing the standards and providing feedback to, to the editors. So it's a very collaborative process between uh, the people who, who make the standards and the people who, who use the standards, which sometimes can be the same, but hopefully not, because then we can have uh, different perspectives. 
And uh, normally the, the outcome of, of these code sprints is, is very positive because the, the standard can move forward. And, and also the, the implementations get updated to the la latest version of, of the standard. So as you can see, the standards are in development. So if you want to keep track uh, of what is happening, it's really important to be, to be present in the, in the code sprints. And uh, they are uh, in hybrid format, sometimes virtual. It, it used to be virtual uh, during the, the pandemic. And now we're trying to move them to be, to be hybrid, so you are very welcome to uh, attend in person, but you can also join uh, vi virtually. So there is a, a, an upcoming code sprint in mid-September. This one is going to be in London, and it's going to sp specifically focus on metadata. So it's a joint code sprint organized by uh, OGC and ISO TC211, and the focus will be uh, OGC API records, uh, ISO 19115, uh, stack, and uh, FGJSON, which is uh, an encoding format, which is used uh, in, in this standard, but also in other standards. So it's a format that is being uh, developed uh, recently, more or less recently in OGC, and is meant to be like a superset of uh, GeoJSON, which is backwards compatible. There will be another uh, code sprint towards the end of the year, so in December, and this one will be more focused on web mapping. So OGC API tiles, OGC API maps, and OGC API styles. So I want to leave you with this uh, last slide. Uh, I think, uh, there's no more neutrality anymore, so we either to be part of the solution or, or part of the problem. So if we want to fix interoperability and make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen, I think we need to be all involved. So thank you very much uh, for your attention, and I can take some questions. Thank you.